Our distinguished speaker today is Nita Farahani, the Robinson O. Everett Professor of Law and Professor of Philosophy. Professor Farahani is a member of the Duke Law School class of 2004 and the winner of the Distinguished Teaching Award from our students in the class of 2021. Professor Farahani is a leading scholar on the ethical, legal, and social implications of emerging technologies, including artificial intelligence. The founding director of Duke Science and Society, she is also the chair of the Duke Master's Program in Bioethics and Science Policy, and the director of the Science, Law, and Policy Lab, which is affectionately known as the SLAP Lab. She is a frequent commentator for national media and radio shows and presents her work to diverse audiences, including the World Economic Forum, Aspen Ideas, Ideas Festival, TED, Judicial Conferences for the U.S. Court of Appeals, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, National Academies of Science Workshops, and the American Society for Political and Legal Philosophy, as well as by testifying before Congress. In 2010, she was appointed by President Obama to the Presidential Commission for the Study of Bioethical Issues and served in that capacity until 2017. We are delighted to have her here today to address the class of 2020. Professor Farhani. <clears throat> Don't know where to put that. <laughs> Graduates, parents, friends, and colleagues, good morning and welcome. I'm truly honored to address you, the class of 2020, who join me here today as fellow Duke Law alums and colleagues. It's also a privilege to be joined by your parents, your friends, your family, here and remotely. This class is here because of your guidance, your love, and your support. Having weathered some of the most difficult times in modern history, they wouldn't be here without you. Class of 2020, you are here today, almost a year and a half after you should have been, because of what we now understand to be the worst pandemic in US history. It has brought turmoil, tragedy, and drastic changes to our lives and the lives of others worldwide. We didn't know what was unfolding in the spring of 2020 when your graduation should have occurred. It was a time of great uncertainty, of unfamiliar lockdowns and shifting ground beneath us as we were all gripped with the fear of the unknown. You know this already, of course. You know why we couldn't celebrate together and in person the wonderful milestone of your graduation from Duke Law School. But the, the fact that you're here today, that means that you realize the importance of marking together in person the occasion of your graduation and celebrating your accomplishments with your friends and your colleagues which coincidentally is, is what I want to talk with you about today. The importance of celebration for resilience, character, and for living a meaningful life. First, celebration helps you mark progress toward your life goals. Like most people, you probably spend a lot of your time thinking about the future. Before law school, during, and since, you have focused on your ambitions, how to achieve them, and how you're progressing toward your goals. This is important to do because it sets you up for success. But focusing too much on what comes next might lead you to forget how much you've already accomplished. Think about it. Before today, when was the last time that you really stopped to celebrate an accomplishment? When I returned back to Duke as a law professor, having graduated from the school eight years prior, I had this really strange feeling as I walked the hallways. I felt like I was right back at the starting line. Rationally, I knew I had taken a big step forward, but emotionally, it just wouldn't compute. So I decided to do something about it. I threw a party to celebrate the occasion. And you know what? Doing that helped me to gain the perspective that I needed to see the extraordinary progress that I had actually made. Maybe you just landed a new job or quit one that wasn't right for you. Maybe you carved out time to support a friend before their big move, or started a new hobby or a sport. The moment could be a big one like graduating or passing the bar, or a small one like finally getting your dormant orchid to bloom. Whatever your accomplishment, 
Each one is preceded by deliberation, energy, and dedication, which is meaningful and deserves to be recognized. Even a small step toward a larger goal is worth celebrating, and it helps you to see your progress forward in life. And it just might help you to gain the perspective you need, like I gained when I came back to Duke. Second, celebrating helps you to build on your momentum and to set your sights even higher in life. Landed your dream job? Awesome. Now it's time to think about how to be great in that role. Contributed in some small way to advance the public good? Great, aim to do even more to help society. Celebrate your wins at work and in life so that you realize you're on a roll. When you take time to reflect and celebrate what you've accomplished, it helps you to realize what you're made of, your unique talents and your strengths. You can build on that confidence to have an even greater impact on the world around you. Third, when you celebrate your accomplishments, you help others know what matters the most to you in life. As the pandemic has unfolded, issues that I've long written about and opined on have gone from academic inquiry to startling reality. From rationing medical care to balancing individual liberties and the common good, vaccine passports and mandates, I've publicly engaged on some of the most difficult choices facing society today. As graduates of Duke Law School, you have and will find yourself similarly faced with opportunities to bring your expertise to bear on some of the most important issues facing society today. As you do so, take the time to celebrate the opportunities that you have and the contributions that you make. Humility is a virtue and it's critical to human flourishing, but humility and valuing your own achievements can peacefully coexist. Your friends and your family or boss might highlight your wins and congratulate you for your accomplishments, but you will oftentimes be the best judge of what truly warrants celebration in your own life. Don't brush off your hard work as insignificant. Recognize it and allow others to recognize you too. When you value yourself, it helps others value you for what really matters to you. Fourth, by celebrating your own accomplishments, you will become far more aware of the accomplishments of those around you, and you'll celebrate their wins too. Just like you might need to nudge your friends and your family and your colleagues to celebrate the wins that really matter to you, they might be waiting for a heartfelt congratulations from you. Spending time reflecting and celebrating on your own accomplishments will help you to notice the achievements of those around you. Keep an eye out for their wins and toast them often. Recognizing others helps you hone your humility and build a winning character. Recently, I noticed there was a comment that, was, that somebody had posted on Twitter, directed at Simone Biles, the most phenomenal gymnast of all time. The comment said, Jade would have won floor gold even with Simone in the finals. To which Simone Biles responded, I 100% agree. Jade had a phenomenal, near perfect routine. She would have kicked my ass. My jaw was on the floor. I'm so proud and happy for her. It takes character and class to recognize and build up others around you, even when somebody's trying to tear you down. You can't beat someone down when they're lifting others up. Celebrating others elevates you just as you're elevating them. Fifth, celebrations give you the space to reflect on what really matters to you in life. As our lives have been stripped down over the past year and a half, and we've had a chance to really notice what we miss and what we don't, we've been able to start to find out what really matters to us. Take a really trivial example from my own life. It used to matter to me that I fly enough on an airline every year to gain elite status for the perks of first class upgrades and moving through the airport more efficiently. <clears throat> and I would toast the occasion of elite status annually. But you know what I do not miss at all? getting on an airplane. It's hard to imagine a future version of my life when airline elite status matters to me again. <clears throat> Which is why it's so important that when you stop to celebrate certain accomplishments, you pause and ask yourself, does this feel as good as I thought it would? Is the achievement as important to me now as it was when I set out to accomplish it? 
Does it line up with how I want to live my life? And as you reflect, remember that achievements might sometimes be failures in disguise. At our family dinner every night, we go around the table and we ask each person to celebrate something that they tried and failed to accomplish that day. We do that because having the courage to try something new and failing at it isn't always easy. And sometimes failing at something new is a bigger deal than doing more of what you're already good at. So take time to reflect on the things that you bravely set out to do and celebrate your courage for having challenged yourself anew. Six, celebrate even in difficult times. You might think that right now isn't a great time to celebrate as we grapple with the devastating consequences of COVID-19. In your first year of law school, I was grappling with our then recent family tragedy and my new appreciation for the fragility of human life. But it is celebration that has helped me move through my own grief. And it is celebration and joy that will help you gain the resilience you need to navigate even the most difficult times in your life and in the world. Cultivating a tradition of celebration helps you to experience joy and gratitude, which you can draw on during complex, unpredictable, and exhausting times, like the one we're in right now. Sometimes it takes extraordinary effort to choose to celebrate when we feel like we're just trying to survive. But it may be that our darkest hours are the most important ones to reach for things to celebrate in life. Celebrations, big or small, give us something to look forward to, to lift our spirits up and help buffer us against the heartache we inevitably endure as we face tragedies in life. It may be a while before we can really celebrate in the ways that we were all used to, but even lighting a candle alone at home can help us see light in times of darkness. Finally, celebrations help, us give, help give us the breaks that we need to flourish in life. Many of you know me as the neuroscience law professor. Even in criminal law, I talked with you a lot about your brains. Unsurprisingly then, my final appeal for you to celebrate is for the sake of your brain. Celebration works wonders on your brain. It bathes your brain in dopamine and elevates your feel-good hormones while decreasing your cortisol levels, your stress hormones. Burnout is all too common as we approach a mental health crisis of epic proportions worldwide. Being overworked and too busy can often feel like a badge of honor, and downtime and balance can seem like guilty pleasures. But our brains are like sponges that can only soak up so much before they're saturated and they need time to dry out. Every now and then, your brain needs a feel-good break to improve your mood, boost your performance, and increase your ability to concentrate. Brain breaks help us to gain the big insights in life we need to know ourselves and to have the impact we want to on the world around us. Pop open that bottle of champagne just because it's hump day. Celebrate your act of kindness to another. Go for a walk to celebrate and reflect on your accomplishments. Find ways to celebrate big and small, not just momentous occasions like your graduation from law school, but everyday wins too. Before you turn your focus back to your next big challenge and life goal, take some time, belatedly as it is, to really soak up your accomplishment of graduating from law school. Our celebrations may not look like they used to. They may be smaller, masked, and more distanced from one another. But it's never been more important to find new ways to mark the occasion. You have already achieved so much to be here today. I'm so glad that you're here to celebrate that. And I'm honored to be part of your celebration. Remember to drop me a line now and again and tell me about your wins, big and small, along with your friends, family, and colleagues. I'll be here cheering you on. Congratulations. Thank you.